It's My Knife here, and welcome back to the series, or just welcome if this is your first episode. This is episode 8 of Let's Play Terra Farmercraft, where I try to focus a little bit more on farming by not allowing myself to eat uh, any meat from animals. I can only eat uh, vegetable products, basically. Okay, uh, as seems to be coming the norm in between episodes I spent a day actually two days doing various and sundry household housekeeping chores so I made up some tools that I was running low on um, oh <laughs> I guess the big thing was I had a lot of grain here so I ground it up into flour using the quern down here down the left and then I took that flour and made it into dough and then I cooked it up into bread all of which took quite a bit of time now one of the things I like about terra firma craft I think is kind of cool is there are these things in it that are pretty tedious and then you get improved technology and makes them a lot easier. For example, when we're running around hammering uh, the leaves of trees to try and get some sticks, that becomes pretty tedious after a while. But then once you get metal tools, you can build a scythe and it becomes much easier. Um, a similar example is using, you know, a campfire here to cook things up. You can only cook one thing at a time. Um, and that becomes pretty dull and tedious, but once you work your way up to a forge here, you can cook five things at a time and stuff like that. However, there are still a few things that are a bit tedious that they haven't made any easier yet. And one of them is this bloody quern. Um, you have to sit here and click on the handle once for each grain that you want to grind into flour. So I'm hoping in some future thing there'll be some technology, you know, give us wind power or water power or something so we can automate that as well. And get rid of one more tedious task. Okay, um, there were some uh, notes that I've been making of things I've... Whoops, I forgot to turn that off. I, there's some notes I've been making of things that I've been... Uh, that I've said that were either incorrect or, or stuff that I forgot to mention. So I thought I'd just go through a few of those quickly now. Um, one of them is when we were doing the recipes here before, I don't think I mentioned that, uh, the ingredients that, that it takes to make up a specific recipe, they're different, uh, for each seed. So if you find out that, you know, potatoes, onions, bread, and carrots give you, you know, a, you know, a super speed and really, you know, really filling meal, well, in the next seed world that you create, that won't necessarily be that same recipe. So it is a, you have to, you know, something you have to discover each new seed that you do. Um, oh, at the end of the previous episode, I was trying to make clothing out of cloth. Turns out that this was just a figment of my imagination. There is no such thing. Cl you can't make clothing from cloth. Uh, the first kind of cloth you can get is leather, and we'll get to that later today. Um, Oh, and also when I, when I used a knife to uh, shear the wool off of the sheepskin, I was supposed to get a hide and I couldn't find it and I was looking around for it. Well, somewhere during my walking around it finally popped up. So it must have just been like in between some chests or maybe had sunk beneath the floorboard or in a glitch or something like that. But I did eventually get my second, uh, second one. And the last thing was scythes. When I was showing you how to use a scythe, I was just showing you how to take these... Uh, how to take it to leaves and get sticks, right? So I showed you using the side like this. Do do do. Okay, and you get a whole bunch of sticks and maybe some saplings. Well, one other use for a scythe is it can take out grass faster. Um, if you're trying to get hay, the only thing is you need to find a nice clump of grass to demonstrate it. Now well, this isn't a very big one, but this will probably do. So if I hit this grass here, you see it took all three of these out. So I think it takes out like a three by three square or something like that of grass. So if you have some very dense, uh, very dense area of grass, the scythe can be, oh, here I have some up here. This is good. Uh, scythe can be a faster way to, to get the, uh, uh, to get the hay that you need for, say like that, to get for your thatch. So, or straw rather, not hay. It should be hay, but the game calls it straw. So that was the other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, in between, the other thing I did is I reorganized the garden a bit. I harvested some of the thick crops that had come in and planted new ones and added signs for the remaining ones. So everything's nicely organized. Still waiting for my wheat to come in. All right. 
Okay, so for today, what do we want to do? First thing is I'm feeling very, very naked here. As you can see, I got nothing. So despite my icon. Um, so I just thought I'd start showing you how the leather making process works. Now, if you remember, we created these uh, three barrels and the bottom barrel contains lime water. So the first thing we do is we put the hides into the lime water and seal them in. And that's going to take some amount of time. So right now we can't open it anymore. We won't be able to open that again until the hides are finished soaking in the lime water. So we'll come back to that for stage two. Okay. The other thing I wanted to do, let's see, we've got some, I don't think it's going to be rice. It might be oat, it might be barley. And I don't, uh, if it is, if it's wheat, I'm not going to try it. Uh, I want to try breeding the sheep. I just don't remember which grain it is I need to breed them with. So let's find out. So this is the oat. Ooh, the way they're looking at me, I think this is it. Yes. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I did the two rounds. <laughs> That's not going to help. Okay. So are you pregnant now? You are pregnant! Okay. So there we go. We have successfully bred our sheep. And the pigs we know do wheat, and so I can't breed that other sow until I get more wheat. Just getting close. It's getting close. Oh, look, look, come on. Just turn a little browner on top. And then you'll be ready. And the onions, of course, and the garlic go like gangbusters. Okay. Well, that's those two items off. Now, in terms... Oh, let's put this stuff away. Uh, I carry this around with me. Rice seeds. Oh, I got that from grass, so I hate to throw that away. I'm not allowed to keep seeds I get from grass. Though it doesn't really matter anymore. Well, no, because there's still some crops I guess I could get that I don't have yet. So. Okay. Um, next thing we have to do is right now, the only metal we have is copper. Which we're getting from this tetrahedrite ore that we found. We, uh, we have found some sphalerite, and that's it. So the next stage after copper is bronze. There are two types of bronze that we can get <coughs> initially. Uh, one is just standard bronze, which is copper and tin, and the ore of tin is cassiterite. Uh, the other one, excuse me. <coughs> Bit of a scratch in my throat. The other one is bismuth bronze, which uses, um, as you might think, copper and bismuth and uh, zinc. Now, this sphalerite is the zinc, so wherever we found the sphalerite, we can go get more zinc, so that's no problem. But we still haven't seen any bismuth. And the ore for that is, uh, is uh, a name bismuthonite. Funny that. So those are the, that's the other thing we got to do is we have to find either some cassiterite or some bismuthonite so that we can move on to the Bronze Age. Um, so the easiest way to do that normally is to just wander around and look for surface ores because those are both ores that can be found on the surface. But since it's about to become nightfall, I might as well introduce you to the next thing I frequently do. <clears throat> is I always like to have a mine underneath my uh, abode, which gives me something to do if, you know, say it's thunderstorming outside and I don't want to have to risk the heebly jeebly's. So let's make ourselves a whack of ladders. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. And what else am I going to be needing with me? Well, I don't need these maple planks, that's for sure. Uh, I don't think I need... Oops, that's not where dirt goes. <clears throat> and since I'm not going anywhere yet, I don't need that with me. See all this bread I got with me? <laughs> I'll eat like a king. I need... My prospector's pick. Come on. There we go. All right. Now, unlike normal Minecraft, the dangers of digging straight down are low. I mean, there's still a risk that you'll fall into a cavern, but 
TFC doesn't have the big, you know, the intermediate lava pools. There's only lava right at the very bottom, and very occasionally there's a small lava pool where you'll find sulfur. So it is a little bit risky, but it's so much faster to <laughs> dig down this way that most people playing TFC just go straight for the straight down digs. Okay, so this is obviously going to take a little while, and uh, I'll bring you back in if I find something interesting or when I get to the next stage of my uh, my mine here. Well, welcome back. Uh, how's that song go? Some guys get all the luck. Just digging straight down here, and what should I run into? Oh, looky here, tetrahedrite. So, not as good as running into, say, Cassiterite or Bismithonite, but it's kind of handy having a nice supply of tetrahedrite right under my home. I didn't even have to probe. Well, I was using the probe as I went down, but I didn't even have to search for it. I just ran straight into it. Awesome. So, we'll just hollow out a bit of space here. So I can get off the ladder and then uh, continue my mystical journey. Who knows what else awaits me? Bring you back in later. Welcome back. <clears throat> I ran out of ladders and came up to get more. And uh, since it's now daylight here, I figured, and since I'm up here, our uh, hide here should be ready for the next stage of turning into leather. It's now a soaked hide. So we take our soaked hide. Actually, there's two of them, so soaked hides. And we scrape all the crap off of them that was loosened by the lime water. And now we have scrape tides. And then we have to stake them and seal them into the just plain water barrel now. And they'll be in there for a little while to leach all of the lime back out of them. <coughs> Otherwise, if you wore the leather, the lime would burn your skin. Um, and I needed more, more ladders, which means I got to go and get some more sticks. So I'll use my handy dandy scythe here, but <clears throat> but other than that, there's nothing exciting happening. So I'm just going to gather some sticks here, make some more ladders, and then continue digging down into my mine. So I'll bring you back once I get down to level 60. And when I bring you back, I'll explain to you why level 60 is important. Bye for now. Okay, folks, welcome back. I've finished all my hammering and thumping and all that. And uh, can I go outside here? It's time for a Terra Firma Craft geology lesson. Now you can see the water here. Um, it's level. It's basically the water is level with a block at my feet. And if you look at the mini map, the numbers under the mini map in the upper right corner, you'll see that that's 144. That's the uh, the height that my feet are at. <clears throat> so the water level. I don't know if it's always exactly 144 in TFC, but it's always right around that number. Okay, so that means we're 144 up from bedrock. Now, between us and there, there's going to be a layer of dirt typically, not always, but usually. And then what happens is Terraforma Craft generates three different layers of rock. Okay, now as we go down, we can see them. Uh, whoops, there we go. Uh, this first layer of rock is slate. You can see that there. And as we go down, 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 I think it's around 100 or 110. Yeah, here we are. At 111, we get into the second layer of rock here. You can see the difference between the slate and the one below. This is phyllite. Okay, and then we go down and down and down. Even further. Do, 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 do. And nope, still phyllite. And then we get down to around level 60, which I mentioned before, and we start getting into our third layer, which is this black rock here, which is basalt. Okay. Now, it's not supposed to be this way, but due to, I guess you'd call them bugs, in the, uh, in the terrain generation for terra firma craft, the ores typically tend to cluster around the interfaces between two layers. So since 60 is roughly where the second and third layers meet, the ores in the second and third levels layers will tend to cluster around there. They're not always right near there, but they're more likely to be there than elsewhere. 
Okay. Um, now, as I mentioned, there are certain ores we can find on the surface. So, that, so those are the ones that we can find on the top layer, and that's like tetrahedrite, cassiterite, bismuthinite, sphalerite, and native copper. And I think that's it. There might be a couple I'm missing. Uh, the important thing is that we cannot find uh, the higher tier metals. Uh, we're not going to find uh, iron in particular, no, none of the iron ores, which are magnetite, limonite, and hematite. And we're not going to find gold. We're not going to find silver. Um, uh, graphite, which, which we'll need, which isn't an ore, but it's a mineral that we need. And uh, kaolinite, which is another type of, it's a type of clay, special type of basically fossilized clay that we need for, for doing certain things. So all that, those higher level things, you never ever find them in that top layer of rock. They're either in the second or third layer. So that's why level 60 becomes so important is because all these higher level things are in the second and third layer and those deposits tend to cluster around level 60. Okay, um, so we'll come back to that in a second. I have not yet pro picked this area because I thought, you know, I would share that with you. But the next important thing is this is cool that I found basalt because basalt is a hard enough rock that we can use it as an anvil. <clears throat> so there are two ways in terraform craft of uh, creating metal tools and implements. One that you've been seeing me use up till now is you melt down the metal and you pour it into a ceramic mold. Uh, that only works for the softest, the lowest tier metals, which are copper and bronze. When you get up into things like iron and that, you have to, you, you, you can't use that method. You have to form them into hot ingots and then pound them on an anvil. Now you can use anvil technology on copper and bronze as well if you want. It's just not, it's not necessary. You can, you can pour them out. But so uh, when we start getting into anvils, the very first anvil we'll get will be just a stone anvil. It's a stone block that you hit with a typically a stone hammer. I happen to have a copper hammer here that I can use, but, um, and then we'll use that to build up to our copper anvil and then we'll use the copper anvil to build up to our bronze anvil and so on until we can finally start working steel or iron and then steel. So, but not all rocks are tough enough to take that punishment. So with this basalt here, if I take my hammer and I right click, You'll see it darkens and it insets a bit. If I right click it again, now I get this interface here. This is the anvil interface. And if I wanted to use it, I would put the hammer in here and then start hammering things. And I'll, I'll explain all this when we actually get around to doing anvils. The important thing here is that if I do it to the fillite, I'm right clicking on the fillite and nothing happens. And the same would be true of the slate. Those are both stones that uh, I think they're sedimentary in nature. Anyways, just too soft. Is, is you can't you know you can't pound metal, like, can't beat them with beat metal with a hammer against them. But this stuff is. So I've left these two guys standing so that I can take two raw blocks of uh, basalt back up top with me to use as stone anvils. So that was another lucky find. So, so far we've been pretty lucky. We found some tetrahedrite on the way down. Oh, and I found some traces of sphalerite on the way down too. So it may be that we can get a sphalerite mine running off of here without having to run off to wherever else it was we found it. But now let's start pro picking. Oh, and I guess the setup here I should point out is I typically, when I get down to level 60, I build out a nice little chamber here so I can throw in a couple of uh, chests for storing useful items. And then I branch out in four directions in the four cardinal directions from there. So, okay, so let's have a quick pro pick around and nothing, nothing. Hematite. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, more tetrahedrite. But the hematite, oh man. Okay. That's lovely. That's iron. Hematite is, uh, as I just finished mentioning, hematite is a uh, is an ore of iron. So that means we've got some hematite. Might not be much, but it could be a lot. We can't use iron yet, but still that's awesome. Uh, more traces of hematite. Must all be under here. Yeah, tetrahedrite, more hematite. Oh, okay, well I'll investigate that hematite uh, in greater detail later. So, unfortunately we haven't found any cassiterite or anything, so I could start just hammering through in here. But instead we still got some running around to do uh, in the world above. And like I say, it's a lot easier to just whack on rocks up on the surface and hopefully find some cassiterite or some bismuthinite that way. So um, between sessions, I'm, or between episodes rather, I may start digging out some of these tunnels and see if I find anything interesting, but other than that, no. Okay, so let's head back up. And I guess it's probably time to do more work on our leather. 
put it into its last stage. So what other things we need to do? I need to replace that roof with something a little nicer. We eventually need to find chickens. I think I mentioned already, chickens are found primarily in the jungle. You may occasionally find them in the woods. So I'm, that's the other thing I'm hoping that just as we wander around in the woods here that we'll stumble across some chickens, but that's only ever happened to me once. So I don't hold out a lot of hope for that. Okay, ah yeah, this stuff's ready now. <clears throat> Final stage, whoops, is up top here. And we tan it. And again, we're gonna have to wait a little while for that to take place. Okay, well, I'm not sure what I wanna work on next, whether it's gonna be this roof or something else. So I'm going to uh, take a pause here and I'll be back once I've got my thoughts sorted out. Okay, I've completed my prognostications and what I would really like, I'd really like to finish up this leather working that we're doing over here. Whoops, he's up here. So I don't want to go too far from home. So what I'm just going to do is go back down and chase down that hematite and dig it up. And by that time, the leather should be ready and we can finish with the leather working. So that's not going to be too interesting for you unless <laughs> I get a cave in or something. So um, I'll either compress it or just cut it out and show you the good bits. So back in a bit. Oh, I almost forgot something. That's one other thing I meant to do. Let's just find a little bit of room here. Uh, turn face that way. There. I forgot to do my 50 subscriber dance. Da -da 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 -da. Yoo -hoo -hoo. Whoa. Yeah, I'm over 50 subs now. What can possibly stop me? All right, so I'll see you back in a little bit now. Uh, well, got a little excited there when I saw the uh, basalt. <laughs> okay, oops, yeah. Yeah, we know about, oh, cinnabar, too. Small sample of tetrahedrite. Okay, that's better. Because all I've been getting up till now were, um, you know, it's just once talked about tetra, there, small sample tetrahedrite, or hematite again. All I've been talking about was traces, and chasing after traces can be pretty frustrating because it could be that you're picking up the edges of multiple deposits, in which case the usual thing about, you know, finding the center of your readings and then digging there isn't going to work. So having, getting it up to at least a small reading, that's an improvement, so. Well, bring you back in when I've figured out where the heck it is. More to, ah, uh, there we go. That's hematite. Yep, there we go. We found our hematite, which is sort of a shame because if it was further away, there would be a chance it would be, oops, got a drink. There's a chance it would be a larger deposit. It's only going to be a small deposit. Still, that's eh, better than nothing. Oh, there's more down there. Okay, well, now I just have to hunt it all down and dig it all out. Oh, cave in. Well, nothing hit me though. Maybe I got lucky and exposed something. Expose some habitat for me. Uh, maybe got unlucky and blocked my corridor going back. Let's take a quick look. Nope. Oh. Well, it was a kind cave-in, as cave-ins are want to go. Well, clean it up. Yep. An untidy cave-in is a devil's playground or something. So. Well, our final tally was 15 hematite, which, as I was saying, I just given 
TFC's love for powers of two, I believe eight is the bottom of the range for a small deposit. So 15 is not bad. It's better than the minimum. Um, and uh, as a bonus, or perhaps consolation prize for only finding a small deposit, we got 4860 uh, of these tetrahedrite. There's still a lot more tetrahedrite in here. And I know I got all the hematite because at this spot here I was reading traces toward the end, and now when I check it, it doesn't tell me traces of hematite anymore. It only wants to talk about tetrahedrite. So that means I got all the tetrahedrite. The other thing that's kind of weird is this here. Um, unfortunately, I've mined all the other tetrahedrite out of the walls here, so I can't show you. Oh, wait, here we are. So this is phyllite with some tetrahedrite in it, you see, and it's like got these like bluish and purplish hues to it, which is slightly different from the regular phyllite. Well, this looks to be phyllite as well, and but it, it's got these black bars in it, but if I check it, that's tetrahedrite as well. So it's just kind of, maybe it isn't actually phyllite. Maybe it's another rock type, hang on a second. No, because the only things around here are the phyllite and the uh, basalt. Maybe in some weird way that's supposed to be tetrahedrite and basalt. I guess that could be. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's it. I found the uh, hematite deposit. It's not a massive amount, but, you know, it's enough for a couple of ingots at least. So let's go back up top. I'll meet you up top and we'll finally finish off that leather. Okay, well I'm fed up and watered up now. And tannins up at the top, right? Ah, there's our finished leather. Now we can take that finished leather, we put it in our hot bar. Ooh, I should get another knife while we're at it. Whoops. Uh, do I have any nice hard stone here? Basalt's the hardest I've got, I guess. Make a couple more knives. I guess now I'm rolling in the copper at some point I should look at actually making a copper knife that'll last longer. Okay. Or I should put it here. Okay. And I don't know if you need the knife in your hotbar or just in your inventory, but anyway, so with the leather in your inventory, you right click. And that brings up the leather cutting interface, which <laughs> looks a lot like the napping interface. And the first thing we want is the chest plate. And what's the next best thing? Probably the leggings, eh? And at last, we have some armor. It's not great armor, but it's better than nothing. So, <sighs> And uh, one other thing I noticed, I was up on the roof throwing away some stone that I didn't need anymore. What time is it here? Uh, it's late, but who cares? And that is that. Anybody around? Good. I think our wheat, yes, our wheat has finally matured. Yes, yes. Wheat. Oh, lovely wheat. Hmm. Lots of weeds growing out here. Gotta do something about that. Uh, so we need to find a place for the wheat. So we can immediately replant it. So let's grab our hoe here. Whoops. Didn't want the scythe. All right. <clears throat> first things first, take our wheat. And boom. Convert it into green. Take half of that green. And make it into... Uh, and make it into seeds. All right. Now, who do we have left here? This guy here. How's he doing on red? Oh, he looks good on red, doesn't he? And red is what wheat needs. So, one, two, three, four. And we plant our next, I guess this is winter wheat, eh? Oh, it's late summer. <laughs> guess it's not winter wheat. Uh, here's our sign here. Why did I think... Oh, it's in my other world that it's winter, that's why. The dangers of 
running multiple worlds at the same time. Where are we just... Oh, there it is there. And the last thing, since we have the wheat now, we can take two of them. And let's just make sure we got the right guy. That's the pregnant female. That's the non-pregnant female. So boom and boom. And get your stuff on. Yeah. Now they're both pregnant. Okay. So I guess that's, that's probably all we're going to do for this episode. Uh, next episode, I'm not sure yet. I've got some... There's a bunch of things we need to hunt down. Like I say, the chickens and still need to find some cassiterite and some bismithonite. Uh, those can take a lot of time, either just exploring out in the world or uh, mining. So <clears throat> uh, they may end up being like fast forward scenes or cut scenes or stuff I do off camera if there's not much else exciting that happens. But we'll see how that works out. And I'll see you back here hopefully for episode 9. Bye.